there shouted. Love on two or three people today. Let them know you are glad to see them. Speak life into them, and then you can be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, before I get started today, uh, if there's an empty seat towards the middle of your row that you're sitting in, could you just scoot in? We have people standing in the back. And so what we need to do is allow the ushers to fill in from the outside in. So if there's seats available towards the middle of your row, please slide in so that the ushers can seat uh, the individuals that are standing from the outside in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Praise God. If you all would, turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 33. <clears throat> I don't have a lot to say today, but what I have to say by the Holy Spirit is extremely important. We started off uh, the 21-day fast. The message that the Lord gave me was call me because even as believers, we have a tendency to not make God our first response. And so Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 1 through 3, as the foundation says, foundation text says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord Elohim, the self-existent one, the one that was before any of this ever was, the one who created it, established, and formed it, who made it the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. He's reminding Jeremiah of his ability to create and get things to us that we cannot get for ourselves. Then he tells Jeremiah why he shut up in prison to call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And so most of us, when we are confined, when things are tight, when we're going through a rough patch, we're not thinking about great and mighty things. We're not thinking about God doing something great for us. We may not be thinking about that, but how many of you know God is thinking about that all the time? Some of you, how many of y'all have already experienced some great and mighty things in just 21 days? Right? I'm enjoying reading them. Just keep sending them to us. Of course, the best way to follow today, we want to welcome our online viewing audience, all of our streamers. You can follow along the YouVersion Bible app. All the notes are there, but I'm going to give you a little bit more today. So make sure you add notes to the outline that you see present today. Let me go by what we've talked about up to this point. His position is, point number one, call to me. Then why, right? Because he wants to do all of the things that he just described. And then we've looked at point number two, his promise is I will answer you. How many believe that God will answer you every time you call him? Right, that's his promise. He will answer you. And then number three, his persuasion is that he will show you. Right, the three things that he talked about was great, mighty, and then things you do not know. The great things are uh, things that are exceedingly beyond your ability. But just because it's beyond your ability, how many of y'all know it's not beyond God's ability? Right? And we talked about that on last week. The other category was mighty things. That it was nothing is beyond the access of God. So you might not be able to get to it, but how many of you know God can get to it? God can reach anywhere, and he can get you anywhere that he desires to get you. And let's get to our point today, the things that you do not know. What I want to convince you of today by the Holy Spirit is just because you don't know it doesn't mean it's not present. Right? And I want you to accept this truth. If you knew what to do to get out of your situation, you would have done it by now. How many of y'all agree with that statement? So the fact that you're not out of it means you don't know what to do. Right? And because you don't know what to do, doesn't mean God doesn't know what to do. And what he's trying to tell you is I want to show you about the things that you currently don't know about. I know about them, and I want to reveal them to you and show them to you. I mean, we've got to know how to access that. All right, so now let's follow that thought today. And again, it won't take me a long time to do what I need to do on today. So we're talking about the things you do not know. So nothing is beyond the abundance of God, right? 
three areas, great, mighty things he wants to show us, and then the things we do not know, which is letter C. Nothing is beyond the abundance of God's revelation. So the next question to me would simply be, then how do I know? Right? If he wants to show me the things that I do not know, then the obvious follow-up question is, then how do I know? Right? How many good parents are there in here? I mean, we're trying to share all the information that we can to help our children. Is that correct? All right, let's discover some things. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It won't take me long to do what I need to do today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's begin at verse 6. How do you know? It's a great question. If he wants to show me the things I do not know, then how do I know? How do I discover these things? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. Don't miss this today, folks. This is really, when I tell you a master key, this is a master key. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. The word wisdom here is a Greek word, sophia. It can refer to higher wisdom or lower wisdom. And the context will determine which one it's referring to. So right here he says, how be it we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Now that's the higher wisdom. Yet not the wisdom of this age, that's the lower wisdom. Nor of the rulers of this age, the magistrates, its current leaders, who are coming to nothing or who will eventually die. But we speak the wisdom, higher wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, if you're able to highlight on your device, underline on your device, that is a Greek word, mysterion, and it literally means secrets. Other places it's translated as divine secrets, right? And so they're secrets to us, but they're not secrets to God, right? And so he's not withholding these divine secrets from you. He's actually withholding these divine secrets for you. But you don't get these in moments, and you don't get these in pass-bys. You get these spending time with God. So he says here, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery or in, in secrets or divine secrets. Yet the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages, notice what this wisdom is for that's hidden or these secrets that are hidden it's for our glory, it's for our praise, and it's for our honor. Folks, God is trying to get you to a place where your life brings him praise, your life brings him glory, and your life brings him honor. How many of y'all receive that today? How many of y'all believe that today? All right, stay with me now, continue to follow me. So, verse 8, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known then they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Of course, referring to Herod when he tried to kill him at his birth, right? And then we've got Caesar who executed it, the governor Pontius Pilate who washed his hands from it. I mean, if they actually knew that he was God, they would have never killed him. If they knew he was their answer and the reason and, and what he came for was to bring them to a place of praise, glory, and honor, how I many know they wouldn't have killed him, Right? So that means there was information that was available that was hidden that some knew and some didn't. But it was available to everyone, right? Some responded properly like the wise men who followed the star. They had discovered some information and some wisdom that had been hidden. When they saw certain things, they followed the wisdom and it led them to the Son of God. Others missed that and tried to kill him and eventually thought they did. But how many know you can't kill God? How many know their arms were too short to box with God? Right? So I need you to understand. You can have a thousand people sitting in the room, and some will get it, and others won't. But as a good father, it's available to everyone. Someone say, I'm getting mine. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, I'm getting mine. Say, I receive mine. All right, let's keep reading here. So they wouldn't have did it if they would have known. Verse 9, but as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, watch this, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has, what? 
prepared, prepared is past tense. So that means there are some things that are ready and that are available and that are waiting on you. But your eyes have not seen it, your ears have not heard it, and it has not entered into your heart yet. That's the only reason you don't possess it. There's a husband prepared. There's a wife prepared. Healing was prepared over 2,000 years ago. Come on, come on, somebody. Freedom from poverty was prepared over 2,000 years ago. If I'm not walking in it, it's because it hasn't been revealed to me, even though it's present. All right, stay with me now. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. How many of y'all love God? Why don't you lift the other hand right now and just tell him how much you love him. Go ahead, tell him how much you love him. Come on, go ahead and bless his name right now. Glorify, magnify his holy name. Verse 10, now, past tense, folks. Watch this now. Stay with me. But God has what? God has what? God has what? What has he revealed? Everything that he already prepared for us. The word revealed literally means to disclose and to take the cover off. So if we're not seeing it, how many of you know it's not his fault? Right? He goes on to say the things that have been revealed to us through his what? All right? So now we're talking about revelation, right? How many of y'all were here with Dr. for Dr. Bill Winston? Man, listen, he dropped some nuggets in that service. My God. Some of the things that he said that just still resonates with me, talking about revelation. He said, whatever is revealed to you will be restored to you. Right? Something else he said is God transfers what you see. If you can't see it, you can't have it. This was probably the most powerful one for me. If it's not revealed to you, you cannot possess it. So verse 10 says, but God has revealed. He took the cover off. He disclosed it to them or to us through his spirit. Notice uppercase S. So now we're talking about the Holy Spirit. So the only way you're going to know what's revealed to you is through the Holy Spirit. Not your education, not your intellect, not your degrees. Come on, somebody. Hello. Not your experience. You must get this from the Holy Spirit. It's higher than your wisdom and your knowledge and your learning. So these things come through the Spirit. For the Spirit search of all things, yes, the deep things of God. Watch this now. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man, lowercase s. So now he's talking about your spirit. You are not a flesh. You are a tripart being. You are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a physical body. But you are a spirit. So notice, your spirit knows everything about you. Let's keep reading. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? So notice, if all you operate by is your spirit, then all you will ever know is what you already know about you. Which means most of your responses, most of your reactions would be based off of who you are and not who he is. Let's keep reading. For what man knows the things of man, save the spirit of man, lowercase s, his spirit, that is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Uppercase s. So notice then the Holy Spirit knows everything about God. So when you become born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. 
And part of his primary job is to educate you and tell you everything you need to know about God. His spirit will educate your spirit, reveal to your spirit everything that you need to know about God. Your spirit will give your mind understanding. You will have an aha moment, and then it's uncovered, it's revealed, and now you know what's available to you. And now you know how to possess it, right? A lot of people say, I'm believing God. That's only one part of the puzzle. Right? And they get stuck right there. And you can be stuck believing God for 20 years because you must know what to do while believing God. Hello. There are some instructions. There's some information. There's some wisdom to get you out of debt. There's some higher information that you currently don't know to get into a relationship that will be a lasting one. Right? You've, you've got to tap into something beyond what you've always been. All right, let's prove that. Put Matthew chapter 16 up on the screen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Let me show you something here right now. The church could not start until it was revealed to someone that it needed to start. Heaven was really on lockdown. It was closed. The church couldn't begin until somebody saw it. Let me prove it to you. Look at verse 13, Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 14. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So clearly, whoever said that, it hadn't been revealed to them, even though they were with God. This is what I'm telling you. You can be with him and not get it. Keep going. Verse 15. So they all missed it. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Only one person answered this. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the anointed one and the anointing, the son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood, lower wisdom, has not revealed this to you. But my father who is in heaven revealed. The cover had been taken off. Next verse. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. A lot of people called their churches the rock of Peter, or, or how many of you know he wasn't talking about he's going to build his church on Peter? Hello? He's going to build his church off of Revelation. The church can't move forward until the, it's revealed to them how to move forward. You can't move forward until it's revealed to you how to move forward. Let's keep reading here. Even so, no one knows the things of God except uppercase S, the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not lowercase spirit of this world. See, cosmos there. Orderly arrangement of things right? World system, right? We haven't received that. But if we're still operating in it, it's because what we need to receive hasn't been revealed to us. See, when you continually take charge cards and charge up things that you can't afford, that's not God's system. And I don't care how much I talk to your head, you will never change until the Holy Spirit reveals that to you. Come on, I'm preaching better than you all saying amen in this place, right? It's never God's wisdom for people to sleep together before they get married. That's the world's wisdom. But it'll never change as long as it's in your head and in your spirit. It will only change when the Holy Spirit reveals to you how much better he has for you. And I was, if I was in a holiness church, I'm talking about a church of the living God where, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, they would have said, amen, glory to God. That is the truth, pastor. Come on, praise God and make the devil mad real fast. So when you see people continuing to operate in a system that is diametrically and demonically opposed to God, even though they come to church, they can't change until it's revealed. 
They can hear messages all day long. But until that message gets in them and God reveals to them, I remember the day I saw how nasty fornication was and how it was destroying my body and my life. I remember the day I saw that. I said, I don't want to do that to myself ever again. I love me too much. Drop down to verse 16. Let me give you another nugget. All right? And you need to make this a part of your confession every day. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Easy question. We all can. Most people will say nobody. Right? If I would have had you all answer that question, guess what everyone would have said? Nobody. But yet he said, the works that I do shall you do, and greater works. But we have the mind of Christ. Right? So would it be safe to say then, if I don't know what I'm doing, I don't have his mind about this. Right? And what I need to get is his mind about this situation and not mine. Which means I need to confess every day that I have his mind. But if I confess it and don't go get in the word, I'm not going anywhere. Put Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 on the screen. Extra nuggets. Veggie nuggets. Did anybody just see that? I just saw a vision of an egg white veggie omelet go across my face. With avocados, spinach, onions, mushrooms, tomatoes. Anybody else see that? It just flew by my. Come on, somebody. Come on, we're getting, I'm getting close to that veggie omelet, boy. <laughs> Glory to God. It was revealed to me right there in that moment. I had a revelation. Joshua 1.8, how do I get the mind of Christ? I've got to meditate the word, right? Think about it. Joshua is now in the promised land, but they're giants. You've got to now possess it. It's not automatic. You've got to go in, and you've got to make war against people who were born for war, and you all have never been. You, your people aren't trained to do anything. And this is the strategy that God gives Joshua. He says, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it. How often? Meditate means to mutter over and over again. Think about it. Right? So if you want the mind of Christ, you've got to meditate the word about your situation. Every aspect, every angle. Say it over and over again. Mutter it. Father, talk to me a little bit more about this and how it relates to my situation. So you can get his mind on it and not yours. Right? Meditate day and night that you may observe to do. A lot of people meditate with no intent to do. It's called head knowledge. So that they can have letters behind their name. For then, for then you will make your way what? And you will have what? After you do what? How often? For the purpose of what? Doing. Then, you see how this works? Then you'll have the mind of Christ. One more. Go to Psalms number one. You all getting anything out of this today? Right? How many of y'all know the Holy Spirit always will get you to your destination? Because the Holy Spirit and the Word will always agree. They will never contradict. Put Psalms number one up on the screen, stanza one or verse one. Psalms one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Be careful who you get your information from. Who walks not in the counsel of the un ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he what? How often? 
In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. If I want the mind of Christ, I've got to meditate the word of God because Jesus is the word of God. The word dwelt among us. The word left heaven and came, dwelt among us and became flesh. Jesus is the word. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 and verse 14, right? Keep reading here. Blessed, uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Next verse, watch this. And he shall be like a tree planted, firm foundation, by the rivers of water. Well, trees get their sustenance from water. So notice, this particular tree has many avenues that's sustaining it. This is a person who meditates the word day and night. They can lose one job and five other ones appear before one check closes out. Come on, I need somebody in here to say amen. Yeah. This is the person that has a business, a job, a career. Invest. This person has multiple streams of resources that is sustaining them. So when one dries up, I mean, oh, God has four to five other ways to make sure all your needs are met. And his, that brings forth its fruit in its season, his reef shall not wither, watch this, and whatever he does. That's a specific person. What is that person doing? Meditating the word how often? Whatever that person does because they have the mind of Christ on it, it has to prosper. I declare that everything you put your hands on works. Come on, as you meditate the word of God. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Let me give you one more, right? If the Holy Spirit is going to reveal something to you, it's going to be in the Word of God or by the Holy Ghost. If it's by the Holy Ghost, then it's going to agree with the Word. Don't follow voices that you cannot confirm in the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. And I can spend more time here today, but I'm just going to back this out because we got a young adults mixer today. So I want to let them go ahead and start meeting each other. I don't know if they still do all of that. Y'all remember, what was that little dance right there? Well, okay, let me get back to the word. You was doing it the other night. What was that little dance? No, no, no okay. First Corinthians, that's, that's, that's like 15, 20 years ago. All right. Let me share something with you all before I read this, okay? Everything you see here, I didn't know how to do any of this. Never done it before in my life. And this would be on a bigger scale of what I'm describing to you right now. So that means I have to get this from somewhere because I don't have it. Right? So I can't be in pride acting like I know what I'm doing. And water dripping on you right now. Come on, somebody. Carpet peeling up. Come on, somebody. Lights popping while I'm preaching. Hello, somebody. I mean, it would be real clear to you. He, uh, he should have asked somebody. <laughs> right or wrong? Do you all understand there were over th thousands of questions that needed to be answered to get this done? And I know the answer to none of them. But he does. Hello? All right. 15 years ago, my daughter's 18 years ago, 18 years old, so actually it was longer than that. She's 18. So she was pregnant with my daughter. So let's say 20 years ago, 20, 19 years ago, let's say 19 years ago, we were in a quarter million dollars of debt. That's $225,000. That's one house that was about $200,000 and then a car that we owed about $25,000 on, right? I sat down and I did a budget based off of having a child. I looked at the school we wanted to send the child to. I looked at my income. When I backed out the budget, we could not live on that income with me taking care of it alone. So I said, Father, I know you know how to do this. Right? And I want to be the man of my household. I want to take care of my family. I don't want my wife to work unless she wants to work, but I don't want to be dependent on her income. You gave this to me as my responsibility. Show me how to do this. Amen. 
So the Lord, I had a dream. My wife is sitting right here. I had a dream. In the dream, it was how to become a millionaire and keep your day job. Because I was called to ministry. I was not leaving God. And I would not chase money. So whatever it had to be, it could not take me away from my calling. All right? I'm just going somewhere with a quarter million lives worth of debt. He leads me to go talk to a DECA millionaire couple. That couple leads me to some information. I come back and I tell her, and I tell her, the Lord, Lord told me to learn how to invest. Right? Watch this. We don't have money to invest. So the Lord told me to take the equity out of the current home that we built because we got in the subdivision early enough that every 30 days, the, the values of the properties were going up $10,000. I borrowed... How much? $50,000 the first time? How much? All right, I borrowed $25,000 the first time and bought an investment property. Flipped the investment property and got, I don't know, $40-something thousand dollars from that, $30-something thousand dollars from that. All right? So we'll make a long story short here. How many of you do that one time, you can keep doing it. Two and a half years later, a quarter million dollars of debt was canceled. Okay? The mortgage said it takes 30 years to do that. Lower wisdom. Once I tapped into higher wisdom, we paid it off in two and a half years. Come on, somebody better get in this line right now. Come on, I said somebody ought to get in this line right now. Right? Two, quarter million dollars. So you don't have problems, you just need revelation. You, have, you, you need opportunity. You, you don't have problems, you have opportunities that you need revelation on so God can show you how to solve those. Everybody clear? The bank said it takes 30 years. God showed me how to do it in two and a half. Keep in mind now, I just want to be clear, I had never bought and flipped a home in my life. And I would say the first four properties we bought were all mistakes. Because, you know, your first ones is just an education. <laughs> we looked back and couldn't believe we bought those properties. But guess what? God sold them all. I forgot that part. In the middle of a housing bubble bust. Nobody's selling nothing. And we selling everything. Come on, somebody. Come on, can I just get five people in here to understand that it does not take God long to get you out of the current situation that you're in if you'll tap into something. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, and I'm going to close right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Go straight to the Amplified class. Well, stay there. Stay there. For he who speaks, other uh, translations uh, say he who utters or he who prays in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? And we're going to get into this a little bit later on because, of course, a lot of people say in Acts there's a natural manifestation, right? And, and the people uh, literally, right, began to hear these people speaking in their language, and that's how they got saved. Here what he's telling you is men don't understand this. Right? And I'm going to show you the argument on that. So they were doing what they do. That doesn't mean they were speaking in the other people's language. The scripture actually said they heard them. It's a difference. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands it. What is he doing then? How be it in the spirit, his spirit, he's speaking what? Same Greek word, divine secrets. Secrets to you, but not secrets to God. Put the Amplified Classic up there. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God, for no one understands or catches his meaning. Because in the Holy Spirit, he utters what? Secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. 
So, folks, if you'll spend enough time in the Word of God and praying in the Holy Ghost, eventually your understanding will be enlightened. Just making sense to anyone in here, right? How many of y'all accepted this truth? If you knew what to do, you would have done it by now, and you'd be out of your situation. How many of y'all accept that as true, right? So at some point, you got to say, just like I did, Father, I don't know what I'm doing, but you do. And so I'm going to meditate your word long enough, pray long enough in the Holy Ghost until I know what to do, until you reveal to me what to do. It don't take long to get married. It's a lot of men and women in the world. I'm, right? I'm going to give you a nugget. You want to know how to get married? I said, listen, both of you listen to this. You want to know how to get married? It's got to be revealed to you, and it has to be revealed to him. Once they both see it, can't nothing stop them. That's why you don't want to deal with people that that hasn't been revealed to. And you can tell it hasn't been revealed to them by how they act. They don't get your value. They don't understand your worth. You understand? The one that that's revealed to will. Which means the way she showed up is I spent enough time meditating who I was supposed to be and who she was supposed to be. Then enough time praying in the Holy Ghost when it was revealed, when the cover was lifted off, when I saw her, I said, Shaka Mata Pashe Papashe. Watch this. And then when she saw me, she said, Shaka Mata Pashe. And you put those two Shaka Mata Pates together. Come on, somebody. And we can make something happen in here. Come on, somebody. Right? You all getting anything out of this today? All right. I'm done. So the great things, the mighty things, and the things you do not know persuade us that nothing is beyond the ability, the access, or the abundance of God. The power of God's position enables his commands to call upon him in prayer the power of God's promise assures the answer and the persuasion of great and mighty things which we do not know is unrivaled. And if you believe that today, just go ahead and take 30 seconds and give God your best praise in this place today. Come on, give God your best praise in here today. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God your best praise in here today. Then you can be seated. So if you're smart, you're going to spend enough time in the Word of God and praying in the Holy Ghost. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, if you're smart, you're going to get filled today. I'm telling you, God has some prepared some stuff for you that will blow your mind. You're out here struggling, and you don't have to. Right? But remember the beginning of this message. You don't get this in moments. You don't get these in drive-by prayers. It takes time to meditate. It takes time to pray in the Holy Ghost. All right, listen to this testimony over the 21 days. We are thankful to be a part of this life-changing movement of God. Thank you for calling it that. We are a family of five who attended Linked Up Church for the first time on Father's Day. We moved to Georgia in 2017 and have been searching for a church like this one ever since. Although we've joined churches, served as volunteers, and given tithes, we've never really found a place that we could call home. Also, one Sunday, while with days, as days had gone by, we had visited another church. We had went to Dr. Price's website and decided to attend the Marietta campus. Following that one, uh, that one turn, we had, well, we had lost, uh, we had lost loved ones tragically. Our children uh, had been bound in addictions. Our marriage was struggling, and we had experienced conflict at work, attacks on our bodies, uh, but 
but you name it, but God. As a family, we committed to praying and fasting during Connect 21. And as a result, God has moved miraculously in the last 21 days. Our extended family has grown closer. Our marriage has renewed love and admiration. Our children are seeking God more and more for themselves. We received an $11,000 settlement. Provided wisdom concerning complex work decisions. Salary increases at work, all in 21 days. Scholarship opportunities for our son to attend college in the fall healing from pain in our bodies, and several more answered prayers in just 20 days. God is a great God. Come on, somebody ought to, come on, somebody ought to, my God, is he a great God. All right. On last week, we told you there'd be people that wouldn't get out of the week. All right. Without a bam moment. Anybody want to raise their hand if you just look at look at look around the room? Let me read one to you. I was in the ten, attendance at the eleven o'clock service on January the twentieth, last Sunday. The pastor charged the congregation to take their prayers for need to the Father, and that he was so confident that their prayers would be answered before midnight last night. Right? That that if that didn't happen to some people in the room, don't come back to the church. Well, I'm here to testify that my prayer was answered less than 48 hours before midnight. I have to be honest. I wasn't very confident that my prayer would be answered before midnight Saturday. But I knew it would be answered eventually. I am one of 800,000 federal employees that have been furloughed for the past 20, 35 days. The news... Listen to this. The news of lately that we have been receiving put out by the government said that we would be released possibly sometime in late February or even March. Suddenly, the president had to change his mind. Boy, boy, I wonder. Come on, I just wonder who put all that pressure on the president of the United States of America to change his mind. Amen. India Drain is her name. Are you in this building, India Drain? Are you in this building, India Drain? Are you in this building? All right. Is there anyone else in this building that you were affected and furloughed is the key word uh, by the government shutdown? Two people standing up there, come down here right now. Two envelopes. Come on, God is in the blessing business. Come on, I said God is in the blessing business. Come on down here. Are you two together? You with her? That's just a little something until that first check comes in, okay? Enjoy that. Come on down here. You're affected by that? That's just a little something until that first check comes in, okay? Love you. Come on down here. Affected by that? that listen, that, that's okay. Give me another envelope. I got, we got... We want to do it. We want to do it. Don't, don't stop us from being a blessing. Key word here is furlough. God loves you, okay? Give me another envelope. We, we can't run out of envelopes. God bless you. A little something to hold you over till you get that first check. Come on, somebody ought to rejoice with these people. Come on, I said somebody ought to rejoice with these individuals. Stay right there. There was a member of our congregation so in tune, man. Went out and bought some things. 
said, I want you to bless somebody in your congregation that's been affected by this. All right? Go get you a little something on that, okay? Hold you over until you get that first check, man. God love you. Thank you. Come on, somebody ought to give God glory in this place. All right? All right? We're just out of time. We're out of time. I wanted to bring the music department back. I wanted to just tear this church up today. I wanted to flip chairs over. I wanted to run around the sanctuary. I wanted to spit. I wanted to just laugh and just, but, but you know what? You look how crowded it is in here, and there's another group coming behind you all. I want to thank you all for bringing your supply to spirit to Linked Up Church these last 21 days. It is so evident. Listen to this, folks. A lot of people don't have this happen in a year. 66 people joined Linked Up Church on yesterday. 66. Everybody stand to your feet. If you're in this building today, look up here if you're at me for a moment. If you're in this building and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I don't know what you're waiting on. I don't know. I don't know what else God can show you. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, this is his call to you today. Will you answer that call by receiving his son as your personal Lord and Savior? Confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that God raised him from the grave. Today is your day to walk in the fullness of all that God has already provided for you. Secondarily, you might be in this building and you're saying, Pastor, I'm already saved. But I got away from God. I got away from the things of God. I went back out there into the world. I want to come back today. I want to give my life back to Christ. He's waiting on you with open arms. He loves you with an everlasting love. He's forever married to you. And he's waiting to bless your life. So if that's you today, believers are praying all around the room. That's you today. Come on back home to the Lord. Thirdly, I can't throw it out there and not give you the invitation. If you've never been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible evidence of praying in other tongues, you want to learn more about that today? It's the most simplest thing and easiest thing in the world for you to receive. If you want to receive that today, I want to pray with and for you. Finally, if you don't have a church home, but you believe God has led you to linked up church, my wife and I, this staff, will pray for you every single day of our lives. Every time you come in this building, our goal is to make sure that you get the Word of God and the Word of God only. So now, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking unless you've been assigned to do so. If you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ, you're here today, you want to come back to Christ. You're here today, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to learn how to pray.